COPD stands for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and it's really comprised of two diseases. One is called emphysema where they actually get damage to the lung tissue and the other is related to damage to the airways. So the airways in COPD become very narrow. There's a, an inflammatory response. They get mucus build up and, and the muscle of the airway um, gets larger and so all of those things combined make the airways very narrow. So these patients have a very difficult time breathing and, and one of their biggest problems is breathing during exercise. Patients with COPD, their, their primary symptom is shortness of breath and it's an incredibly debilitating symptom. These patients, uh, logically they avoid the activities that provoke this distressing symptom and the problem with that is they become very weak. Their muscles become weak, their heart becomes weak and they basically become deconditioned. And so then they sort of enter this downward spiral where because they're deconditioned, they now become short of breath on less strenuous activities. And so it spirals out of control to the point where it dramatically impacts their, their quality of life and their ability to engage in, in some of the most basic daily activities. And, and so what I do is I try to intervene there and, and understand what's causing their shortness of breath, what's causing their exercise intolerance, and then we can look at different interventions to improve those factors and hopefully prevent them from entering that downward spiral. The, my primary interest is looking at exercise, non-pharmacological interventions, and I do some studies as well looking at the effects of different types of drugs. So we give patients with various stages of disease different inhalers, for example, and, and to see how those drugs reduce their shortness of breath and improve their exercise capacity and, and the underlying mechanisms for how those drugs are working. Right now the main focus is trying to understand the causes of exercise intolerance and, and the key is once we identify those causes then we can establish more effective interventions. So the real long-term goal of this research program is to make exercise interventions more effective. And so a lot of patients, they don't actually respond very well to exercise training. You know, their muscles are, are just too weak. They can't exercise at a high enough intensity where they can derive these physiological improvements. So we can do different interventions to help them exercise at higher intensities during their training. Uh, the biggest reason why patients with lung disease need to exercise is so they prevent themselves from entering that downward spiral. So by strengthening their muscles, strengthening their heart, uh, they're able to use oxygen more effectively during exercise and they don't have to breathe as much to perform a given physical task. And if they're not breathing as much, they don't have as much shortness of breath. So it's so critical not only to improve their exercise capacity, their ability to engage in daily activities, but exercise has repeatedly been shown to improve quality of life, to enhance a patient's ability to control their condition. So we have a very unique patient that we saw in our, in our research program. She has quite severe COPD, but she has an exercise capacity that's about 200% higher than a healthy, normal person for her age, for her height, and so on. And so she has COPD, but she has a remarkable ability to exercise because she's been training as an athlete her entire life. So this woman uh, used to compete in the Olympics in the 1940s. Her entire life she's maintained very intense exercise training and so despite her COPD she's able to have a fully independent life. She has incredible exercise capacity. She has very little shortness of breath mm -hmm. and, and the message with this patient is that participation in lifelong physical activity allows your body to adapt to in many ways compensate for the negative effects of COPD. So she's just a remarkable example of how you know, despite having lung disease, she can live a, a fantastic life and it's because she's participated in exercise her entire life. I think the, the big long-term goal of, of this research is to raise awareness with clinicians on the importance of, of exercise in managing chronic diseases. And the, the big problem is a lot of patients that undergo pulmonary rehab programs, for example, or exercise training, they don't actually derive many physiological benefits because they're just so weak. So what we need to do is find interventions that will allow these patients to exercise at higher intensities so that it can develop those important physiological adaptations, like improving the strength of their skeletal muscles, improving their heart function. And by doing that, then we can enhance their, their exercise capacity, their ability to engage in daily activities.